Good evening, everyone. Welcome to October 5th, 2022, Planning, Economic Development and Housing Committee, also known as PEDH. This evening is uh, being broadcast live on HPA TV, uh, Xfinity Government Channel 96, and Frontier Government Channel 6032. It will also be streamed via hpatv.org, the HPA TV Facebook page, and HPA TV, Apple TV, Amazon TV, and Roku. Uh, app, TV app. It will also be available on the HPA TV YouTube channel. I'd like to acknowledge members who are on this meeting at this moment, uh, Councilwoman Marilyn Rossetti, Councilwoman Shirley Surgeon, Councilman John Gale, and also Corp Council Richard Visaggio. And then we also have Aaron Howard, that will be presenting for our item 2.3 on the Sacred Heart Church purchase from uh, Development Services. So to start off, rather than go in order, um, I'd like to, due to the fact that one of the appointees for the uh, Central Regional Tourist di District um, is not available due, due to a conflict of interest, I'd like to entertain a motion to postpone. So move. So second. I have a second. Thank second. you. Uh, thank you. So we have a, a motion to postpone, properly second. Any conversation, any discussion? Okay, so we'll, it'll be postponed for the next PDH meeting. The second item, which is 2.4, uh, moving that one ahead, uh, development services still working on it. So this uh, 2.4 is um, a resolution calling for the Harper Court of Common Council to with city departments to identify ways to create designated tractor trailer parking areas. So being that they're still working on this resolution, I'd like to entertain another motion to postpone item 2.4. So move. Second. Okay. Motion has been made to postpone, properly second. Uh, do we have any discussion on this? Okay. Uh, you, you might, Mr. Chair, you might just want to take a vote on this and the, and the motion to postpone 2.1. Okay. You know, you know, okay, so let's go back. I'm sorry. That's all right. I mean, just okay. saying. Thank you for catching that. So we're going back to the first motion, and uh, it was a probably uh, second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, so it's postponed. Now, item number two, which is point... Uh, 2.4, a motion was made to postpone and properly second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Opposed? Okay. So we'll move on. Thank you, Councilman Gill, for catching that. So our next item will be um, item 2.2, Mayor Bronin with the company resolution confirmed the appointment of CETA, NAMI, to the Greater Hartford Flood Commission. And I see that we have CETA online. Um, thank you, CETA, for being able to join this meeting. And I yield the floor to you. If you can uh, state your name, where you live, and give us some information uh, on yourself. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Cita Nyeme. I live in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, I am currently a PhD student at UConn, environmental engineering. I found out about this committee through Lady Mendoza and I was really excited to be a part of it because um, floods overall part of my dissertation is something that I've been interested in and I would love to be part of the conversation on solutions to floods, um, solutions around Hartford. Okay, we're having a little trouble hearing you, at least I am. Uh, can you tell us where, where where do you live? I live in Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. Is okay. it better now? Excuse me? I was asking if you could hear me a little better now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to ask, uh, does any of my colleagues have any questions for Ms. Nami? Councilwoman Rossetti, followed by Councilman LeBron. So... You know, for my colleagues, and uh, thank you, good to see everybody tonight. The mantra that I usually uh, um, 
bring forth is to thank people who want to volunteer to go on uh, commissions and boards for the city of Hartford. Um, it's just extra time, energy, um, you know, effort, and the things that are done on boards and commissions as someone who sat on the housing authority board for nine years and loved every minute of it. Well, not every minute, but I really want to um, thank Thank you personally, but thank people who do that. And I, I like to say that every time someone comes before us. So thank you. Thank you. Councilman LeBron. Yes, uh, thank you. And through you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Nami, um, just I'm just curious, your dissertation on floods, um, and it's just more more from an academic level and curiosity. So if you if you'd like to speak online, but uh off excuse me offline um the what in particular with the floods is the dissertation is just out of curiosity um so my dissertation is focused generally on natural hazards overall um but there is one that i have focused on floods um which typically just looks at ways we can just be a little bit more resilient against floods that are occurring since actually where the conditions are becoming more and more common uh, um, and for you, Mr. Chair, and would you say, Ms. Nami, like, is uh, uh, would that be a result of like global warming? Yes, it's an um, effect of climate change occurring. Um, as we can all see, temperatures are getting higher, and this is causing sea level to rise overall. So it's becoming more frequent. Um, the type of floods we're having. Right. Um, so a typical one in a hundred year storm is becoming a little bit more serious. Um, it just occurs a little bit more than it normally should. Thank you very much. And I'll just make one last comment, um, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Nami, for um, uh, volunteering to do this. And without going, a, uh, uh, echoing my um, council colleagues, Rosetti's, like this is absolutely perfect. And I think we need more folks that can provide different and refreshing opinions and newer opinions. Um, as they are um, more knowledgeable with the current situations regarding climates and how it re relates to floods. So I think it's um, it seems like a great fit. So thank you for your dedication to this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman Lebron. I also like to acknowledge uh, Councilwoman Theana Hercules is on board here for this meeting. Uh, anyone else have any questions? Uh, Councilman John Gale. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, uh, thank you, Ms. Niami. Uh, I, 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 I've got a couple of comments for you, really. Um, I don't know the extent to which you have institutional knowledge of um, our situation in Hartford and why we have a flood commission and why we have, uh, why we have these concerns. You, you, you've probably studied some of this. Uh, flooding that we had in 1936 and 1938. Um, so that's pretty ancient history at this point, but it resulted in us um, putting the Park River underground. Um, and that's a situation that continued over a series of years. Um, uh, as, as recently as 25 years ago, parts of the Park River continued to be put into a conduit uh, underground as part of this whole flood control uh, system. And you will hear, and I would, ask you to keep in mind um, as you're um, working with the Flood Commission, you, you'll, you're going to hear from time to time people suggesting that maybe there are ways of daylighting the Park River. Other cities uh, have made tremendous use out of um, rivers that they have uh, for economic development purposes. Uh, and in Hartford, we can't do much with the Park River because it's buried in a conduit. Uh, but uh, used to run through Bushnell Park. You've probably seen some beautiful pictures of uh, what Bushnell Park looked like when the river was there, which is all great and good, except when we have major rains and flooding and uh, the entire downtown gets inundated. So uh, we had to solve the problem, but maybe not in the most um, uh, imaginative way or maybe in a way that could be undone some point in the future. So I'm just throwing that out there as something to keep in mind. And the second part of that is uh, the river, the Connecticut River itself, and the and the levees uh, and diking system uh, that we have, uh, myself certainly, and I and I believe other council members as well, 
have always expressed interest in developing uh, or having more economic development along the Connecticut River, and that uh, directly impacts um, the dikes um, that are there, as do other things. I-91 directly impacts them, but uh, there are lots of plans underway. Uh, I-Quilt in particular has plans, um, something called Hartford 400, uh, that is uh, fairly well developed and things that we at council will be considering and hope to be considering uh, that may change some of our highway system and may impact some of this diking. Uh, but, but also um, other plans of, you know, how can we as a city get better uh, use of our river? Uh, so I just ask you to keep those things in mind uh, when acting on the, on the flood commission. Don't, don't foreclose out um, the, the potential for construction next to the dike if it could be done in a way that, uh, that actually makes the diking system more secure and provides the city with another benefit uh, as a for instance. So uh, those are my comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilman Gale. Uh, Ms. Nami, would you like to respond? Oh, uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, that's actually pretty interesting. And I've actually thought about ways that the Connecticut River well, can be used economically. But I would love to look at any data set or any plans that have been thought about so far and kind of just review them, if at all possible, um, just to see what's being done and what could potentially be done as well. But I'll definitely keep those comments in mind. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, does anyone else have any uh, statement, comments, questions? No. Okay, so I, I like to uh, chime in here. So first of all, I agree with my colleagues uh, in this sentiment. Uh, thank you for um, offering your time and services to the city and addressing the issues of flooding and um, and our you know um, natural resources like the Park River and Connecticut River. Uh, I am really hoping that you know uh, to what Councilman Gale just mentioned that um, you know it, it was a sad thing that we have to encapsulate the uh, Park River going through the Bushton Park because I think that's a, a resource that we completely lost that we could have taken advantage of It's an asset. Um, there's other ways to address flooding without um, removing our assets uh, such as that river. Um, but at the same token, we do have issues that um, is, is really not partially with the uh, nat you know, Park River, for example, but we also have, for example, in the Blue Hills area, they have there's a serious issues of flooding that has to, has a lot to do with storm drains and storm systems, and then of course that reacts uh, there's a reaction towards the uh, sanitary system that we have in the city, which is antiquated over 100 years old. So um, I'm just hoping that when uh, you do address these issues, that you look at it uh, holistically and find and partner with other agencies uh, that's um, here in the city to address those issues and address the flooding in the, uh, the Blue Hills areas especially, and how can we take advantage of the uh, Connecticut River. So um, thank you, uh, Ms. Nami, for um, volunteering and, and becoming, or soon to become, I'm assuming, uh, to be uh, on the uh, Flood Commission. So uh, I'd like to entertain a motion uh, I'll make a motion uh, through you, Mr. Chair. I make a motion to uh, favor rec recommend uh, Ms. Nami for the uh, above mention, uh, the said mentioned commission. Second. Okay. We have a motion and it's properly second. Do we have any more uh, statements, comments, or questions? One, there... one statement, one statement, Mr. Chair. I, I had tried to look up. Uh, the resume earlier, and it, it just took me till now. I just wanted to note that Ms. Ms. Niami's resume indicates that she's a Jacob and Lewis Fox Scholar. Um, uh, so uh, uh, I take it that means um, uh, that, that she's a graduate of one of our Hartford schools and received a scholarship from the Fox Scholarship. That's awesome. So congratulations to you on that. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor properly second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, 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 abstains? Opposed? It's passed. 
So thank you, uh, Ms. Nami, once again for uh, your interest and in, in being a service to the city. And by the way, you don't have to stay on for the rest of the meeting. Ms. Nami. Thank you all so much. I look forward to working with you all. Sally, I have to go to class. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Okay. Now we're moving on to item, and I'd like to acknowledge Council President Mali Rosado uh, just came on board online. So our next uh, item, which is our last item for the evening, is item 2.3. Mayor Broner with accompanying resolution of pursuant to chapter four, section two I of the Hartford City Charter, the Court Common Council, does hereby authorize the purchase of the Church of the Sacred Heart at 24 Eli Street. And um, before we continue, I just um, like to note that we received a letter um, from Denise Holter, who's the uh, Chair of Community Action Task Force and Healthy Harper Hub. And I'd like to say thank you to her. Um, there is one little section here that I really appreciate that you wrote, uh, Ms. Holter, and I will read this at this moment. Sacred Heart Church is a key historic asset located in the Arrowhead area. We believe the history of this property, especially as it pertains to the Puerto Rican activism that the church gave rise to overall several decades, is important to honor and preserve. And that's you know one of the factors of why I will be supporting this. And now we have Aaron Howard from Development Services who will be speaking on this item. How you doing, Aaron? Good evening, council members. Good evening. Good evening, Councilman Sanchez, um, President Rosado, and the entire council. Um, yes, I am here today um, just to kind of briefly walk through um, the request by Mayor Bronin um, to acquire what is known as 24 Eli Street. Um, nicely said, it is a historic structure. It does also fall within our Arrowhead planning area. And um, if folks are aware, uh, one of our last tax details, the city did acquire a number of properties within that gateway area. So we thought this was a great opportunity. Uh, came up for us to acquire this property. As noted, it has historic significance, um, political activism. So we do agree that we think this was a great opportunity for us to acquire the property, um, to think about the future use of that property and how that reuse plays a part in the overall redevelopment of the Arrowhead Gateway. Um, so with that, it is um, the purchase price on the table is for four hundred and eighty thousand. Um, in the resolution, it states the funds will be coming out of the city's CIP, um, and we are here before you today to get authorization to proceed with entering into a purchase and sales agreement for the acquisition of this property, uh, which is currently owned by the Sacred Heart Church. So, with that, do I have any questions? Thank you, Erin. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we have uh, Councilwoman Hercules. Thank you. Through you, um, Mr. Chair, I guess one of the things I was looking for in the documents that were sent was the letter of intent. I didn't see it attached. It was referenced. And so possibly, I mean, maybe it's not known yet. I'm just curious what the intended use or reuse would be for the city, what the city may have planned, um, and if that document could be sent around because it, it's referenced in the resolution, but it's not included. Sure. So I understand uh, to answer the first part of the question as it relates to the future reuse, um, I think the goal is to figure out a way to how to help honor um, and ways to honor the activism and the historic significance of the property. Um, there have been some early discussions of a cultural component. Um, I don't think a final reuse has been um, determined at this time, but it's part of the process in which to go ahead and kind of figure out what that future reuse would be. Um, I think because of the timing, because of the opportunity to acquire the property, we really wanted to get in front of it. As I said, because we do own so much property in that area, this would just be a key parcel for us to acquire to be part of that overall redevelopment. Um, and as far as the LOI goes, um, standard typical, um, my understanding is with the LOI is it's just some standard language, um, due diligence period, that sort of thing. There is not really an identified reuse. Um, that's there, and I would most certainly talk to administration about um, the possibility of sharing that, but I'm not exactly sure um, what the status of the LOI is at the moment as well. 
Yeah, I guess that would be my only hesitation in voting on it because it is referenced in the resolution. And certainly I um, appreciate your representations, um, Attorney Howard, but I would just like, I would like to just see it, the, the whole documents before, you know, making a decision because again, it is referenced in the resolution. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Hercules. So Aaron, can you just give us a, a, a quick scenario and what's the, what's the process? What, what are the steps if we approve this? Um, so it's uh, very not much different than how we would normally acquire a property. Um, we would go ahead and enter into, we have a certain period of time to enter into a due diligence period through a purchase and sales agreement. The city would move forward with entering into like a purchase agreement. Um, and during the due diligence, we would do site inspections. We would do look at any environmental questions, concerns, that sort of thing, and go through our analysis. Um, of the property. With the LOI, we reserve the right to be able to pull out of the deal in the event that there's anything that could go wrong as it relates to like a standard practice of property acquisition. All of that is built into the purchase and sales agreement. Um, the timeline for when we would close on the property would be also part of the terms within the purchase and sales. I'm trying to see if I have any more information to kind of give you what those timelines would look like. Um, my so understanding is this is a little bit more aggressive than um, in, in other places of being able to move it quickly because this is a technically a sale with a private property owner, technically with the city. Um, so I'm just looking really quickly to see if I can get more details so, for you. So an LOI is a letter of intent to purchase, but the letter, the LOI is not stating the use of the, of the property, correct? The LOI that I have seen does not state the future reuse of the property. It is literally just basically basic terms of a property purchase and sales agreement. Um, it's basically showing us what the terms of a purchase and sale would be, the sale price or conveyance method, um, the contingency period, uh, down payments, appraisal contingencies, all of that are part of the LOI. Um, the conveyance method is set up to be a purchase and sales agreement. So it'd be a straight sales. There's no real encumbrances or anything like that. We would ask to take the property without any ease, um, liens or anything, clean title, all of that's there. And we would have a, a contingency, date, inspections, very standard standard things. I think, I think the point here is that we don't, we're the ones buying this property and we're taking an opportunity to acquire it in a moment where the property's for sale. Um, and so we're just trying to get ahead of that. So what you're used to seeing on LOIs on our end are, you know, we're working with a developer to come up with a free to reuse. So we have control over that future development. One of the reasons we're trying to acquire this property is so that we can have control over the future redevelopment of the property. So I think the goal and the intent is just to have site control um, first and foremost based on the fact that it is in a highly desirable area with property that we own right around it. It's part of an overall redevelopment or planning effort. And it has such historical significance and meaning to the community that it makes sense for the city to take that, that control of that property. Okay, so then, um, so then once the purchase is, is complete, which is um, what I'm assuming will happen, um, what are the next steps? How, how are we going to assure the community that this will become a cultural center? And in my, in my opinion, I'm looking to see it uh, turn into a cultural center and museum. So, so if I may, actually, you were helping, um, just confirming that um, the LOI does indicate that the indicate that the future reuse would be around civic or cultural purpose, but it's not clearly defined, but that is in the LOI that that would be the intended reuse of the site. Okay, can you share that with the rest of council? You can email uh, it to, to all sure. of us. Sure, um, yeah, I will absolutely, through, through legal counsel. Okay, um, Councilwoman Rossetti. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, to follow up on what you said, I, I, I'm sure all my colleagues have, but I wouldn't, encourage them to read Ms. Halter's letter because it was um, um, it was it was very well done and uh, much appreciated. So that's my comment. Thank you. So to my colleagues, I have that letter in front of me. Would you guys uh, like me to read it? Yes. OK, so here we go. October 4, 2022. All right. Councilman Sanchez, members of the PDH committee, 
As you are aware, since last fall, members of the community have been engaged in a city-led planning process for the Arrowhead Gateway area. Members of the Community Action Task Force of the Healthy Hartford Hub slash Supermarket Project proposed for construction within the Arrowhead Gateway area have been consistent participants in this process, which has been overseen by the city DDS engaged consultant, Bergman Associates. First community meeting of the Bergman-led Arrowhead planning process was held in the sanctuary of the Sacred Heart Church last November. Members of the community discussed numerous ideas for how the property could be redeveloped for community benefits and how such redevelopment efforts should simultaneously ensure that the legacy and history of the church is preserved and honored. Sacred Heart Church is a key historic asset located in the Arrowhead area. We believe the history of this property, especially as it pertains to the Puerto Rican activisms that the church gave rise to over several decades, is important to honor and preserve. Since the property first went on the market in 2018, we have secured resources from various foundations to obtain options on the property, keeping it off the market, not with a goal to develop the property ourselves, but with the hope that in time, either the right community-based developer or the city would have the resources to take title to this important community asset. We eagerly request the committee's support for the proposed acquisition of Sacred Heart Church. Sincerely, Denise Holter, Chair of Community Action Task Force, Healthy Harford Hub. She's also a resident on Enfield Street, Northeast neighborhood. Did we lose Erin? Oh no, she's on. Okay, so- I'm, I'm trying to get my hands on some things for you all so that we can move forward with this. I think there's such importance to try to move this along and try to acquire the property. So I'm trying, um, yes. So I just got okay to share. So I do have, um, the version that I have is just the executed copy of the mayor, um, but I could go ahead and send this if that helps Councilman Sanchez. Um, yes, and if, you guys are, if you're looking, I can share my screen if you want to do it that way as well. I sure, can share let's, it let's and share, share it my and, screen. Yes, let's share. So I'll, I'll give you, uh, hold on, let me make you the host here. Take exit 26 onto Davie Boulevard and State Road 736. Okay, I don't have an option to host, but try and share it anyways. Um, I have the ability to, so. Okay, good. Um, share. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Can you make it larger? Uh, yes. Oops. Right there, yeah. There you go. There you go. Okay, so this, like I said, is a very much a standard LOI. Um, just names the property address, who the owner is, city of Hartford. Uh, purchase proposal, uh, we're finalizing a purchase and sale agreement. Um, no later than 60 days of council's authorization um, because it's requiring a contingent approval by the Hartford Court of Common Council. The purchase price is for $480,000 with a $24,000 deposit. Uh, again, we'll negotiate property access rights, environmental investigations, and other inspections. Standard, um, almost like a home inspection, like a home inspection period. It's the same thing um, put up here. Um, this talks about the, the term will be a purchase and sales agreement um, and she'll be prepared within 30 days, um, the first draft at least within the first 30 days and that during that time being drafted, we will not publicly discuss any negotiations between um, publicly between uh, the property owner and the city uh, to the public. Purchase agreement will include these standard items. Um, the use of the building, this is where I missed um, house of worship, or religious affiliate, uh, but may be used for civic or cultural purposes among other non-religious uses as stipulated by the parties. The sale price for 80, 480,000. Uh, access provisions, due diligence period, environmental disclosure and investigations. Um, I mentioned down payment, appraisal contingency, um, our council approvals. Uh, 
uh, canonical approvals as identified, deed restrictions, um, church name and the use prohibition, and any other conditions to be mutually agreed upon. Um, some of this is repetitive. Deposit 240 contingency. Uh, contingency period to be determined by mutual agreement of parties, commence on the full execution of purchase and sales agreement and terminate thereafter on the contingency date. We will be able to get um, the owner shall return their deposit to us. This again, the very standard. Um, just want to make sure that y'all get a chance to see this. The inspection is set up to give us the access. Um, hold us, we have to have insurance, but hold us to go in and do any inspections that we're looking to do for the property. Um, owner, once everything is good and we're ready to closing, the owner will deliver good and marketable title um, property free of any clear liens and encumbrances other than ones that may be required by the state of Connecticut and others if there's removal of hazardous material. And closing will be held within 30 business days of that contingency day as part of the purchase and sales agreement. Um, the property owner did, was represented by a broker, but it's written in here, um, we don't do business with the broker, so any costs associated with the broker would be the responsibility of the owner of the property. And then standard conditions of an LOI, it's not intended to be binding or um, parties here too. Um, the binding uh, method would come next once we get approval by council and we'd enter into a purchase and sales agreement based on these terms that are identified here and further negotiated and the gov governing law, and then that's pretty much it. Um, and this is just the version that I have in possession that was signed by Mayor Ronan. Thank you for sharing that. So with what you shared, I didn't see anything about cultural uh, center or such. So it was, let me pull this back up. It was under uh, the purchase agreement will include, but it's not limited to the following the proposed use of the building, which shall not include a house of worship or religious affiliation, but may be used for civic or cultural purposes, among other non-religious uses as stipulated by the parties. Thank you for that. Okay, so uh, we have uh, Council Her uh, Councilwoman Hercules who has a question. Yeah, thank you, Aaron, through you. Um... Mr. Chair, I was just curious about the, because you went through it so fast, the deposit, right. is it refundable or non-refundable if it's found that, you know, it's not feasible for whatever environmental reason or something else? I just was, I didn't recall. Sure. Um, it's refundable during the, if if we decide to pull it during the contingency period, it is refundable. All right. Thank you. Do I have any other questions from my colleagues? Okay. There being none, I'd like to entertain a motion. Move that we send this back to council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Okay. So motion has been made properly second. Um, no. Excuse me, uh, Councilwoman Surgeon. Uh, no, sir, I'm good. Okay. Okay. So motion has been made properly second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Okay, so this item 2.3 for the Sacred Heart Church purchase has been favorably, uh, it, all in favor, uh, passes, and we'll be sending it to council with a favorable recommendation. Appreciate your, uh, you know, your attendance, uh, Aaron, um, and explaining what's going on, but I, I would like for you to send all of council members the, uh, the information that you share with us at this moment, but also um, please um, make sure that we're um, understanding what, what process is, is happening. Uh, okay. Keep us updated. Thank you so much. Um, so, My pleasure. Okay, so with this, uh, this being the last item, I um, like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So uh, thank you everyone for attending and uh, please have a nice evening. Uh, tomorrow's supposed to be a beautiful day. So enjoy it. Take care now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.